Have you ever wondered what it would be like to restore a house? What if it took you one year? 10 years? What if it took you as long as 30 years? Well, today's house has been under restoration work for over 50 years now. This is the story of Robert Dealman and his legacy journey with this house. What first got you interested in the house? Oh, gosh, it, it's kind of a cute story, but a real story. When I was sworn in for this army, there was a hospital called Marine Hospital, which was just right up the street from there. And my father drove me down, but I was an hour early. So I walked around the neighborhood and here I saw this house. And I, from being from the country and then seeing enough, you know, I was, I was just amazed with the whole area. And then I went into the surface and then I came back in 70 and I ran across this house. We were going to a barbecue place just right down the street. And I didn't have a car at that time because I just got out of, from Chicago and there it was, all run down with a condemned sign on it. So I did research and found out the church owned it. And I went down there and asked them if they would sell it. So they said, sure, we, we don't have anything to do with it anyway. You know, I mean, we don't know what to do with it. So I bought it for $4,000 and I paid cash. And then that's when it all started. So we'll just start off in the foyer or the stair hall. Yes. Um, so we see the intricate newel posts and we see the stained glass windows. What's original and what have you done here? I just, I took all the paint off of the, the staircase and everything else and I tore a huge thing that went up halfway up the staircase all the way up and was, you know, closed off. And down below in the hall, she put a bathtub. So I tore all that out and put it back the way it really was. And you did all the foam marbling, correct? Oh yes, uh huh. So how long did that take you? Because it's it looks amazing how you've done it. Oh, I'm very fast. I mean, once I get going, you know, and nothing's in my way, I can go like mad. I really can. But um, but that was even fun, you know. I I learned as I went along, you know, like I needed stained glass windows and. I couldn't find anything that fit the windows, you know, like the peacock window in the dining room. So I said, well, I'm going to learn how to do it, do it. And by gosh, if I didn't, <laughs> as you can see by the results, you know. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. But that's not the only thing. I learned how to make shades. I made, oh my gosh, everything. And uh, it's quite interesting to learn how to do that. I'd like to have learned more things, but I, I just didn't have time. You know, because everything in that house is done by an artist. I mean, really, the whole house is, the structure, the, you know, the items, they're all done by some artist. And I really think that's great because I don't think we'll ever have that quality of talent again. Maybe we will, who knows? <laughs> I hope we do.
that's one of the reasons I think it's so important that you know you did all of this to create a house museum so that other people could enjoy this. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your vision for the house museum? I want the house to. It, it's not a mansion or anything like that. It's a regular house, you know, that ordinary people lived in. And I wanted to show them how they, they, they lived. Because, you know, their home and everything was, was their whole life, you know? And that's why they put so much care and love in it. And they over-decorated a little bit, but <laughs> I love it now. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> but I couldn't stand it for a while. <laughs> you know, print on top of print. Oh. But I said, okay, that's the way it was. I have to put it back the way it was. So I did it. So, yeah. That's amazing. And I'd like to ask you about a few details inside the house too. Oh, sure. As you cross from the stair hall into the parlor, there's fretwork above you in the archways or in the passageways. Yes. And then above that, there are these metal details that stick out there like cattails. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this theme? Oh, you know what? That's, that's amazing because that was all torn down, but it was stored in the basement. I still have the original uh, mold that they made it from. I mean, you, they, they, I still have that down in the basement. But most of all that is all original, you know, on this side. But I didn't know what went on on the other side, so I just, I did what I thought you know, would go along with it. Absolutely, and as mm. you look at both sides, it's. It's right. seamless, the transition. It, it really feels like it belongs there. So as we look up at the ceiling in the parlor, what all there is original? Because we see all of these seashells and we see this seashell pattern kind of around the house. I don't know what, I, it's on some of the outside too, you know. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's what was there. So, I mean, a lot of it, you know. And French, you can see French. I guess maybe seashells are French, I don't know. Well, you know, always reminded me of that gasoline, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what do they call it? Uh, oh, the, the shell company? Yeah. Yeah, with, with the shell, you know. Uh, yep. I don't know. So, I put it back the way it was, you know, because I took moles off of most of this stuff and redid it, what was missing. And uh, that was fun. I had I never done that before either, and I learned how to do that. Make the molds out of the you know, and then pour the uh, plaster and everything in it, and then pull it off and see what you got. Oh God, it came out beautiful. Now going deeper into the house and the room with the stained glass peacock up on the ceiling is a mural. Did you paint this mural? Oh yes, there was one but it was so destroyed I couldn't. I know there was peacocks, that's all I know. And I saved a little section of it just to, but that is, that, that is a, a painting that I, New York has in their gallery and it's of uh, Venus and Mar, Mar being united. And that's why you see the little Cupid tying that ribbon around uh, Venus's leg. But I added the other stuff to it, you know, the peacocks and all that stuff. I want to finish that and I want to finish all the other stuff too that I've been working on before I'm too old, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the room that's behind the kitchen in the back of the house that has like the checkered fireplace. What What is that room? Is that a library or? I use that one as a music room. So that's why it's so fancy because you know, they made it into a dining room and everything, so. Absolutely, and the light fixture in this room is beyond ornate. Was this original to the house or did you bring this item back in? 
No, I bought those back too. She took those too, I remember that. And she told me which room they went in and I rewired them and polished them and put them back. Wow, and then the fireplace is really unique for that time period. Did you create the fireplace in this room? No. Oh, no, that one in the, in the music room? Yep, in the music room. No, but it's, it's not really, it's not like all the other ones. It's French, you know? Yeah. You can tell it by this, you know, there's a detail and everything. But I think they, they had a, a stove, you know, that went in front. Because it did have the hole up there, you know, in the chimney, so. But I didn't want to do that anymore because, you know, we can't use them anyway, so. I I think I have the stove, I don't know, but uh, I didn't want that because it was a small room and then with the stove in it, it just ate it up too much. I thought, well, I'm gonna make a music room out of it. Yeah. So that was my doings, <laughs> so. Yeah. Wow. So you've gone above and beyond with the restoration of your house, doing murals on the ceilings and doing all these intricate details. Mm -hmm. um, where did you learn how to do this kind of stuff? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've been drawing ever since I was three, I think. And I graduated from drawing and crayons and all that stuff to oils when I was six. I started painting in oil. See, my grandfather was a, a portrait painter and my mom would pick him up every weekend. He'd bring him back to our house, you know, to spend s Sunday with us. And he, he started teaching me how to paint in oil. And that's how it started. So. <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> That's amazing. So you took all of that life experience with art and you brought it into a house. Right. And how did you go about picking out the colors for each room in the house? Oh, well, those, well, Washington, you helped me with, the, uh, with the living room and the outside. But the funny part of it, I hit it on the nail inside, the woodwork anyway. And, uh, that that was called foam green at one time, but they've changed the names of the colors anyway. Was so many times you can't keep up with them. But I went back. I, I did it exactly what they told me, and I said, "Okay, I'll do it," and I did it. And that's when they went through the well, unheaved all of it, and the outhouse. The outhouse was butted up against the alley, like you know, in the city where, you know. They would fill it full of cinders and stuff that they didn't want anymore. You know, furniture, statues, dishes, old mason jars, everything. You know. So they, they came up with a lot of stuff. The only thing I kept was the dishes that wasn't broke and one statue. And I don't even know what it was made out of. It's like glass almost. But that's the only thing I saved out of it. I let Washer you have all the rest of it. Oh, and I did save some old mason jars. But that's the only thing I got. And then with the furnishings and stuff like that, I told you Ludwig next door was housekeeper of them and she would take care of them all, all the way up until she was dead you know and she inherited all the furniture and, and stuff inside so what she did was move it and she had a carriage house in the back of the house and she stored it all i mean everything photographs even the blueprint which i missed she wouldn't sell that to me. So we've talked about the entire house and it sounds like you've had an amazing journey 
over the last 50 some odd years as you've worked on this house and brought it back to life. Um, what would you tell our audience about preservation and about why it might matter for future generations? Oh my God, because it's getting harder and harder to find this stuff anyway, you know, it really is. And the younger generations don't want it. It's old, they want the new clean line, strictly no maintenance type stuff. So people are getting rid of it. So I wanted to save it. That's why I saved all the kerosene. A lot of them were electrified, which I don't like, but they were, so I kept them anyway. But the house was originally all kerosene, you know, it wasn't gas or electric, you know. And then when gas came in, they put gas fixtures in it. And then from that, they went with electric and, you know, wired it with for electric. That's how all that behaved. What is a memory at the house that just really sticks out to you as being really good and really positive? <gasps> I know. When I bought the, the ice box rack, And that really said, well, I've got it going now because I've got the, the wooden stove. So I said, now I've got the, the, the wooden ice box. So the kitchen's almost original, you know, with the ice box and, and the wood stove. And I just went from there. I don't know why. I, why not? My God, why waste it? It's here, I'm going to do it. So I did it. So, but I was, I bought another house across the street and I fixed that up. It took me 10 years for that one. And I didn't restore it. I mean, I didn't destroy anything, but I rehabbed it for, for I could live in it, you know. And uh, I was going to use it as a living quarter in my studio. And I worked on both, I guess I worked on both buildings at the same time, I think. I never had time off, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got pictures to show it to you guys. I look like a bum. <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> I really enjoyed doing it. I'd do it all over again. <laughs>